Hi, I'm Jim Gordon and you're watching Market One Minute. Joining us today is Jay Hutton, co-founder, CEO, president and director of Visibility Group Technologies. Jay, welcome. Thank you. Lots to talk about here. Let's start with visibility. Tell us about visibility and what trends you are seeing in the retail sector. Well, visibility is a software company, mm -hmm. uh, artificial intelligence with a specialty in computer vision. Okay. So what we do is we build software that teaches computers how to interpret, collate and report on all the things they see. We do this for the purposes of extracting meaningful information for the purposes of retail, right. security and other applications. In retail, what you'd be most interested in if you're a retailer is who's moving through my store? How are they moving through the store? Are they going to deli, bakery, then they're buying beer? What is that, what they call in our industry, the path to purchase, the customer journey? Right. If you're a brand and you're activating some kind of messaging in a store, measuring the performance of that messaging against a demographic, a targeted demographic, or the overall performance of that messaging in store is valuable and can be picked up and learned by computer vision. So it's a very explosive marketplace. It's got a great deal of appeal at the moment. And what is driving the recent upturn in retail deployment activity? Well, for years, retailers did messaging mm -hmm. to consumers with printed materials. We all know this. We've seen coupons. We've seen cardboard displays at checkout. Mm -hmm. That entire business is inflecting now to digital. Computer vision gives us the ability to drive measurement into physical spaces. Everyone pre appreciates that a store is a better place to drive a promotional message because you're at a place where you can buy that which is being promoted to you. Right. If I can now also provide real-time measurement into a store location, I've got something that really trumps the internet in terms of its impression or advertising value. For the first time in the last year, year and a half, we're beginning to find retailers speaking about impression, which is advertising language sure. for stores and understanding that their shoppers can be monetized and that's really changing the landscape. How is visibility driving innovation that we're seeing happening in the brick and mortar store locations right now? So for a while I thought we would build the world's best software and we'd be done. But as it turns out we engage now from the cradle to the grave. Full activations, consulting, aggressive guidance to brands and retailers about how you leverage, optimize and deploy digital surfaces in retail doing that with camera technology to, to get the audience measurement, doing that with security technology to provide for a loss prevention capability, all this informed by computer vision. So we have a broader engagement, a more comprehensive mandate, not just software guys, but uh, identifying the applications from a subject matter expertise point of view. Okay. And Jay, what categories in the retail market were early adopters? It's really interesting. It's not who you might have predicted. Oh, okay. Our first customer was Nestle, multi-brand beverage company. Mm -hmm. Second customer was Coca-Cola. But the guys that have really grabbed a hold of this thing and moved it forward is Pharma because they have extremely high margin product. Mm -hmm. They have a complex cell. Think of digital signage in retail informing and educating at shelf. The second category that is surprising to us is vitamins and supplements. Again, extremely high margin. Right. When you calculate a 25% lift on supplements, you're talking meaningful revenue increment. And the complexity of that sale, if I have bone density issues and heart issues, what's the appropriate supplement for me? An educational campaign at shelf is of course extremely valuable and that's why those two categories are probably leading the marketplace right now. And what other sectors are applicable for your technology? Really there's three key sectors. Retail as we've just described at mm -hmm. length and the second is security. Just like we can teach cameras to interpret what's happening for the purposes of retail outcome, where are people moving within retail mm -hmm. and how are they engaging with brands, we can also look for persons on a database that are bad guys, you know, banned from facility. We can look for people that are engaged in fights. Right. We can look for auto accidents, weapons, those sorts of things happening where we can teach the computer how to interpret the video stream for meaningful insights on behalf of and in addition to an operator. The third market is transportation. This is the unintended one. Right. Because we do computer vision, frequently we get customers with a thousand different use cases. In this particular case, you're looking at using computer vision to get real-time analytics as to the number of persons in a bus or the number of persons at a, at a transit station. These sorts of real-time analytics that provide a civil society outcome, a municipal outcome. That sort of thing is really valuable and we're seeing more of that now. Going from that then to my next question, which is, is, is visibility able to document sales lifts and ROI? 
Absolutely, not a single campaign we've done is less than 25% lift. I can show retailers that they'll sell more product by digitally activating and measuring that experience in store all the time, every time. Minimum 25%, as much as 40% lift, you sell more product. In addition to that, I'm giving them more data about the nature of their buyer. Right. You know, is that a male, is it a female? We measure sentiment. Are they engaging happily? Are they confused? Are they angry? All that information incredibly valuable to a brand who spends a lot of money trying to target their message to a specific consumer and they may or may not miss that consumer. So measuring that experience is part of what makes it uh, a valuable exercise. One last question for you, Jay. Uh, can you talk a bit about uh, how 2019 ended for you and, and where you see the rest of 2020 going? Well, we got fortunate. And in an emerging company, sometimes you have to create your own luck and sometimes yeah. you get some external luck. And in 2019, after three, four years of building and, and, and evangelizing the category, mm -hmm. we did revenue in all those years, but these were proofs of concepts, initial deployments, prove out the market, prove out the technology, prove out the model. In 2019, at the back end, we're really getting past all of that. So in the fourth quarter of 2019, we did more bookings than in the previous 11 months. And the first quarter of 2020, we'll do 10 times the bookings we did wow. in the fourth quarter of 19. So people look for small companies, they're beginning to experience that heavy growth, and this is where we are right now. And our projections for 2020 are in the neighborhood of 15 million in recurring revenue, which to us is a real breakout year. This is the year. Jay, always fascinating talking to you. Thanks for joining us Thank today. Thank you, Jim. Cheers.